What's up guys, the May Patreon rewards are now available. Cyclonic Rift, Jace the Mind Sculptor, and Avison Angel of Hope are all available through the end of the month. If you'd like to support our channel and pick up these sweet proxies, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves or by clicking the link in the description below. What is going on guys? Welcome to another gameplay video. Very excited to be playing Teamer. Uh, mutate today. So uh, really this deck is Simic at heart. However, it does technically have Illuma here. So we do have to consider it a, uh, a teamer deck. Uh, this being said, we tested out a Saltai mutate deck uh, just a couple days ago. In fact, a lot of the deck list is very similar, uh, but this gets to go over the top uh, in a couple specific ways that I think are very, very good. Now, this is much more of a non-interactive list. Uh, this does a lot more just to forward our own game plan, whereas the Sultai list has a little bit more in terms of, like, removal uh, and things like that. This doesn't really have that, but still has a very, very powerful uh, set of cards here. So, uh, to kind of go over the deck, Amori is our companion. Pretty much as expected, our entire deck is creatures, so might as well have this. Uh, if anything, it makes it a little bit easier to play a bunch of this stuff. So uh, this is an easy include, honestly. Arboreal Grazer and Paradise Druid here are both kind of early game rampers. Uh, ideally, we'll have multiple lands in our hands, so the Grazer can kind of throw those out for us. Uh, and then Paradise Druid, obviously a great hexproofer, uh, really, really good to mutate onto. Uh, but not only that, also fixes our mana and ramps us in that process. Migratory Great Horn also, uh, when mutated, does help ramp us. It pulls out those basics from our deck. We're running quite a bit of basics here, and so it's a, it's it's very very easy to uh, ramp up in this list. Uh, Baby Godzilla here, or a uh, Polywag Symbiote, uh, as it is more commonly known, uh, is our one three. Uh, each creature spell you cost with uh, mutate costs one less, uh, which is awesome because obviously pretty much everything in the uh, four and five drop slot these are all mutators so this just helps cheapen those up for us and whenever we cast a creature spell that does have mutate we get to draw and discard a card so we actually get to loot through our deck a little bit hopefully get to you know some of these big end game kind of cards uh in the four drop slot here we have parcel beast uh, a really nice, easy mutator uh, in the early turns of the game. It's very easy to go like Arboreal, Arboreal Grazer into Mutate, Parcel Beast, maybe Swing In. Uh, this also just helps us find more cards too. Uh, so it's absolutely fantastic there. Uh, we already kind of talked about the Great Horn, just a really, really easy way to mi mutate out something, but also get land onto the battlefield. We do have Gem Razor here as a Reach and Trampler and a way to deal with artifacts and enchantments. We've seen a lot of, uh, in particular, I've seen a lot of enchantments, I will say. So just having a few of these main deck is a really, really nice way to deal with those. It also has reach, so it's able to block flyers, things like that. So there's a lot of upside there. Uh, these two cards are really the ones that are gonna help us end the game. So Auspicious Starix, we saw in that Sultai list, was very, very good. It's also really, really good here. Uh, it just gives you free stuff, which is amazing. Ideally, we can mutate one or two times, and then on the third one, use this, get a couple of extra permanents onto the battlefield. And ideally, one of those is an end race forerunners, uh, which can obviously end the game very quickly. This is kind of, for mono green or any green focus deck, this is really the, the great end game card that you're looking for. Uh, the, what's great is Illuma Apex of Wishes also kind of does that similar thing. Uh, so whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land permanent card. So obviously it's going to be a creature. Um, <laughs> put that card onto the battlefield or into your hand. It depends obviously on how you want it. Uh, what's great about this is if you hit something like, say, a Parcel Beast, for instance. Well, it's not really doing much on the field. Maybe go ahead, put it in your hand, and mutate it again, and then you can get another trigger. That's kind of the idea. Uh, so I really, really like this list. I think it's going to be fun. Uh, as far as the lands go, we've got 14 forests and 5 islands, 2 and 2 on the castles, and then the 4 breeding pools. So we've got a pretty high land count here, but I do think it's a great uh, starting point for us. So... Let's go ahead, swap decks here, and give this one a shot. Uh, I really, really like these mutate decks. I think they are extraordinarily fun. Uh, and the value to be had in them is, I mean, pretty astronomical, to be honest. It's very, very fun. So I'm excited to give this one a shot. That being said, I don't love this hand. Uh, we're against Yorian. I'm going to mulligan this. I will keep this... Uh, 
not amazing, uh, and we kind of need to pick one of these uh, to actually keep. Um, weirdly, I'm going to put this on the bottom. We'll lead on the castle here so we can turn to Paradise Druid and then three, hopefully get the Great Horn down. Uh, that's kind of the idea here. The Grazer's not bad either, uh, but we'll go ahead and throw this out. Uh, and we will see what we can do. Uh, these Yori Index can be very, very brutal, but we'll see what we can do. Also, I'm editing the previous uh, <laughs> uh, uh, videos right now. So that's why, if you see me looking off here, that's why. <laughs> uh, let's go over. Um, I think in this instance, I can go ahead and attack in here. Not 100% sure. Um, I don't like to open up, you know, this kind of thing to to a, a very strong thing. Maybe we wait, uh, because it does have hexproof. I'm going to wait. Uh, it'd be great to be able to... You know, next turn, if we draw a land, be able to uh, mutate this onto here, get a couple triggers, not just one. It's a bit of a greedy play, but we're going to try it. Oh. Yes, please. Let's go. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Let's go over. Uh... Go ahead and get a green land. That's fine. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Ooh yes. Oh, ho, ho, yes, please. Uh, all right. Well, we go to attack <laughs> uh, with our 6-6 six, six here. The only thing I'm really worried about is a sweeper, but, I mean, that's kind of just how this deck goes, I think, so I'm not too worried. Like, you just kind of have to run with it. Um, they could have a shatter this guy here, which is, yep. Gonna suck, but we draw a card at least. Alright. Um, let's throw you down. Let's throw you down. And that. And this. Good news is, we have like a butt ton of creatures. It would have been more mana efficient to do this first, technically, but not a huge deal. We were We had exactly enough, so... Beautiful uh, old school mountain art, by the way. That sucks. Not the end of the world. Let's mutate. Let's go over. Um, I'm going to decline. And this is exactly what we're talking about. We get to now do this again. Um, we want this under, obviously, but now we get an extra activation. Um, that we will throw out onto the battlefield. Alright, let's go ahead and swing in here. <coughs> very, very cool interaction there. I like that a lot. Uh, obviously here again, Banishing Light, not good for us, but it does mean they don't have a sweeper at the very least. Um, and if we get like a gem razor, we can mutate onto this, destroy this. That would not be the worst thing. But this is what I'm talking about, where we do need those main deck gem razors uh, in best of one. I think that's pretty important. Yeah, not great, not great, not great. Um, let's do this. Let's do this. Oh man, that feels bad. <laughs> uh, let's do that. Hmm. So the question is, do we activate this? I think we do. Ugh. Hate that it's a land. Was kind of hoping to hit uh, any creature there, really, just to spread some damage out. I know we could have attacked for two, and technically that is a clock, but, you know, I think the the moral there was that we needed to get a, a stronger, bigger thing. That's a stronger, bigger thing. Um, let's mutate. Let's go over. Um, decline. Let's mutate again. Get free stuff. Uh, under. 
the big problem with these mutate decks uh, is obviously that you're pretty all in. Like, a lot of the time you really do just kind of throw a bunch of stuff out um, and hope it lives. <laughs> uh, worth noting, had we attacked there, we could have had them down, but we would have been a card behind, so I don't think we could have actually uh, won. Um, so what I mean, we, we could have attacked for two the turn that we drew the card in our, from the top of our deck, but then we would have not had drawn that card, so we wouldn't have been able to draw this. Um, so this was, I think, the right call. Um, this is very good against us, obviously. Um, but assuming we can get some other threat, we're okay. Um, and we've got a million lands, so, ugh. hate that, hate that, hate that. Yep. Oh, well, that'll do it. <laughs> Yay, end race four runners for the win. Nice, we got there. All right. One win under our belt. Feeling good with this uh, teamer list. I like this one. Um, it feels a lot more over the top than the Sultai list just on the onset. Like, obviously we've only played one game, but even just in that one game, feels a lot more like powerful. Um, just in terms of, oops, sorry. Just in terms of it gets its own stuff out a little bit quicker. Um, the Sultai list is much more oppressive, we will say. Um, actually think we keep this. It's not amazing. We don't have any real rampers, but this is like a pseudo ramper in our deck, so I'll take it. A um, little bit odd that we play a two into, you know, a mutating two. That kind of feels bad, but it is what it is. We'll 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 give it a shot. Looks like Demir, possibly. That's not a bad draw. Um, actually, that's quite a good draw because then we can mutate onto this on three and be mana efficient about it as well as ramp ourselves oh okay well that kind of sucks they could take this that's going to be a problem but I think they I don't really know what they take yeah that makes sense it's not really the worst thing in the world that they did that though um hmm no can't do that all right Baby Godzilla, go. Sorry if we lose a few frames in this uh, recording, guys. Unfortunately, uh, our network is under really bad strain for some stupid reason. Um, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's just get the forest down. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and mutate. On the off chance that we get to mutate again, it'd be great to uh, just kind of get an extra extra land there. Um, but we'll see. This is annoying against us. It's not the best because we don't have a non-creature spell in our deck. So could be worse. I mean, it does kill a lot, which sucks, but could be worse. <laughs> Teferi, huh? Don't like Teferi. Yep. All right, land. Uh, let's play you out. Let's go ahead and do this over. Go ahead and get another land out here. Um, we'll just get an island this time. We're just really looking to uh, ramp ourselves. So that way, no matter what card we draw, first of all, we have less of a chance of drawing a land, but... Uh, more importantly, we can play anything that we draw. Uh, these Esper control lists are something I'm interested in trying, by the way. Um, I've seen a couple of them running around, and it looks like this might be a mirror, or a, yeah, a mirror mance. Dance of the Mance, that's the one. Probably a Dance of the Mance deck. Um, these are really interesting and pretty oppressive. We faced one of these in our one of our previous games as well. Um, let's do that. Let's go ahead and mutate on. Just getting as much land out as possible here. We'll go ahead and play a Mori uh, creature. I 
I am not going to worry about Teferi quite yet. Potentially next turn, but um, nine times out of ten, they have an Elspeth Conqueror's Death that just is going to kill this. So, yep, there it is. And that's why I don't like really trying to kill that right away. Um, that's annoying. It's not the end of the world. We'll probably have to kill it here, though, because it will get bounced if we don't. Um, yeah. I don't know, though. I'm kind of in for not worrying about it. Um, we're just going to play this out as it normally is here. It just gives us a way to kill this next turn. Um, they can bounce like a Mori, for instance. That's fine. I just hope they don't have a sweeper. These decks are crazy, crazy oppressive, though. They're pretty sweet. Do they have anything? They have a Teferi. Okay. So either way, they're going to get a Teferi back. This might be a bad idea. Yep. Don't like that. Um, let's activate this. That's pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and ditch this now. Draw our card. Let's go over. Let's take action. All right, we just have to, yep, there it is. And that's what we're looking to do. Uh, get that end race four runners out, we can just swing and win. That was very, very sweet. I think given another turn, we would have like 100% lost um, if we couldn't have really finished them off because they were getting pretty well set up with that doom foretold. So. It worked out. Uh, let's jump into game three. I'm feeling good with this deck. I like it. I like it quite a lot. Um, I think it has its faults. And we'll talk about that, uh, especially in video two, where we, we kind of sum up our final thoughts here. But um, so far, I'm very much enjoying it. Uh, here we can lean on uh, Breeding Pool to get Paradise Druid out next turn. Uh, and then we've got either one of these or just play out Amori, to be honest. Uh, Luris, Cyclers. Okay. That's a pretty good card. Uh, let's throw you out. I hate this Cyclers deck so much. <laughs> it's just not, not my favorite. Um, yeah. That's fine. Do it. Do it, do it, do it. Good news is, this is going to be difficult for them to actually target. Um, let's throw that out. We're just going to throw Gym Razor out. Um, not an amazing card by any means, but it gives a hexproof 4-4 four -four that they're going to have to get around. Um, we'll see. I don't have high hopes against this deck, if I'm honest. Um, we kind of just have to get very lucky and win quickly. But here, like, they're going to be able to cycle up and do a good bit. We, the, the problem that we run into is we just don't have a way to remove the Flourishing Foxes. If we did, wouldn't care that much. Not a big deal, but uh, obviously not the case. And this is what we run into. Now we're going to be taking a butt-ton of damage. But we are going to take it. I mean, we can just play this. That doesn't seem all that good. I think we just lose, though. I think we just lose, no matter what. Because um, they can cycle up. If they've got three more cyclers, we just, we're done. No matter what we did there, I, there was we couldn't play two creatures out this turn, so... Wasn't an option. I guess we could have played Parcel Beast and then we would have had, you know, two untapped creatures, but I at that point we're we're just scrounging for another turn. We could have also played Amori, but we're just scrounging for a turn at that point. Not a big deal. Um and this is one of the big weaknesses of our deck is the non interaction side of it. Um, this is very much a goldfish style deck where we're just trying to 
to push out all that we can, um, which is awesome, and it works when they're not faster. Um, but like a mono red deck, for instance, we would ideally be able to outpower. This kind of deck where they get to go over the top, though, does not work. Yeah. All right. Well done, opponent. I hate that deck, but well done. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I hate that deck so much. It's not like it's all that bad. I, I think it's not as good as it should be, but, you know, whatever. Uh, okay, regardless. Uh, how do I feel about this deck so far? I'm loving it. Um, absolutely love it. I definitely think it has its weaknesses, where the Sultai list has a little bit more interaction. Uh, stuff you get to do to the opponent that uh, you don't get to do with this one. But regardless, I think this one is very, very strong, and it goes over the top a lot faster uh, when you've got things like Aluma or Enrace Forerunners, which the Sultai list did not have. So I really like this one. Um, it's worth trying out. I'm going to go ahead and jump into a second video so that way I can get that one up for you guys as well. But so far, I'm liking it a lot. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. Uh, of course, make sure to subscribe as well if you're not already. We really do appreciate our subscriber count has gone up tremendously in the last couple of weeks. So thank you guys. Uh, seriously, all you newcomers, welcome. Uh, we really do appreciate all the support. So thanks a lot, guys. And I will see you very soon in the next gameplay video.